Dolores Huerta is a civil rights activist who, along with Cesar Chavez, co-founded the National Farm Workers Association in 1962, which became the United Farm Workers of America. In 2012, President Obama awarded Ms. Huerta the Medal of Freedom for her life's work. I was born in Dawson, New Mexico, and uh, moved to California when I was uh, six years old. Uh, my mother and my, parent, my, my parents divorced, and my mother brought us, myself and my two brothers to California. Uh, as a teenager, we were always harassed by the police. We had a lot of discrimination in high school uh, against uh, all of the kids of color. And not only kids of color, but also the very poor kids. A lot of the kids that were the Oki kids, as they called them, uh, they also faced quite a bit of discrimination in the high school that I went to. And so you always had this sense of injustice that was happening all around you. Well, Stockton, California, where I was raised, is another agricultural community, just like uh, Kern County is, like Bakersfield is. And uh, so you had a lot of the same dynamics uh, uh, that were going on there. A lot of the people of color did farm work. Uh, and um, so it was always like, uh, always trying to denigrate the people that did farm work and making them feel like they were lesser people, lesser individuals. And uh, so that kind of uh, dynamic sort of permeated the whole community. They started the Blessed Settle Program in, uh, in 1942, I believe, uh, when uh, we went into the war. And they brought in many people from Mexico to uh, fulfill uh, the needs of farm labor. Uh, and, but what happened is after the war ended, they kept bringing more and more people in. And so the local workers, the domestic workers, their wages dropped uh, to 50 cents an hour. And the growers uh, would bring in the braceros and they wouldn't hire the local workers. I grew up in Stockton, California. And in fact, started my first organizing of farm workers in Stockton, California. I formed an organization called the Agricultural Workers Association as part of the AFL-CIO. But I left that organization because I felt that they were <clears throat> not doing the, the kind of organizing that was really going to uh, be successful. And then that's when Cesar and I started the United Farm Workers. And so I moved to Delano when Cesar and I started the United Farm Workers Union. So we organized uh, from 1962 to 1965 for three years. And then in 1965, we had a huge strike uh, where thousands of workers came out on strike. Striking great pickers from Delano began a 300-mile pilgrimage northward. And uh, that strike went on for five years, actually. The strike uh, started in 1965. And it didn't end until 1970. Uh, we couldn't win the strike because they kept arresting us, and they kept bringing more and bringing in more and more strike breakers. So what we did is we started a, a national boycott of California table grapes. And when the employers uh, they saw that they couldn't sell their grapes and they weren't making a profit anymore, so then that's when they decided uh, that they would sign contracts with, with the union. Basically, uh, what what you learn and what you teach is that people have power. That you don't have to be rich. You don't have to speak the English language. You don't even have to be a U.S. citizen, but you, that you do have power and you can make changes. Uh, one of the big provisions that we got for farm workers was uh, the right to have toilets in the fields. And people don't realize that the crops that are picked in the fields go into the box, they go to the supermarket, and they don't go through the car wash, right? So the way that those fruits and vegetables are put into that box is the way it goes to the supermarket. And it's horrifying to think that farm workers didn't even have toilets in the fields or cold drinking water, or soap and hand washing facilities, and yet all of that produce is going directly uh, to the supermarket. So uh, we were able, uh, we got uh, that into our contracts in 1966. Uh, we finally got it as a state law again in 1975. It did not become a national law until 1985. And so now we do have a national law that says employers have to have toilets in the fields uh, for their workers, separate for, you know, one for men and one for women, and they're supposed to keep them clean also. So when you think of all of the great things that came out of the farm worker movement in terms of legislation uh, and in terms of, of leadership, uh, I, I think there, there's probably very few regrets, but there's a lot, of, a lot of gains and a lot of wins. From the day one, when we started the Community Service Organization and the United Farm Workers, we've always uh, been engaged in uh, helping people immigrate to the United States. Uh, in 1986, uh, we were able to uh, pass legislation where we got uh, legalization for 1,400,000 farm workers. And our partner in the Senate then was Ted Kennedy, uh, who helped us get that law, uh, along with Peter Rodino from New Jersey. And uh, it, so immigrant rights have always been at the top, and we're still continuing that struggle right now because we have the immigrants' rights uh, legislation that's going through the Congress. I, I don't believe that the guest worker program should be implemented at all when you have high unemployment. Uh, for instance, in Kern County, we have a 30% unemployment right now. 
We have a lot of people that don't have work, and yet employers continue to bring in uh, people from uh, other countries uh, to do the work. And they keep saying, well, far, you know, uh, ordinary people won't do this work. Well, that's not true. That's not true at all. I mean, if we look again at the Grapes of Wrath, uh, you know, when that was going on, the people that came in here from uh, other places, we have many people here in Kern County uh, who are individuals that are now in, in office and, and that hold different positions in government. There were once farm workers. And it isn't that people won't do farm work, it's that the employers don't want to pay enough money uh, for them to, to do farm work, and they don't want to give them the kind of health benefits that they need. Farm workers see their work as, as something that they do with dignity. They consider themselves professionals, and they should be treated with dignity. And if you're not going to treat people with dignity, and that's why they bring in people from other countries who don't know the labor laws, and who are afraid to speak up because they're afraid they'll be deported or sent out, and or that their contracts will be you know, cut off if they speak out and fight for their rights. And so we should develop a local li farm labor force like we had it before. I get the Medal of Freedom, but it actually represents the work of, of thousands of people that, are, that have worked, uh, you know, to make a better life for the farm workers. You know, in the farm workers movement, we had five farm workers that were killed, uh, two of them here in Kern County. So I get the Medal of Freedom, but it comes on the backs of many other people uh, that have fought uh, for the rights of, of farm workers and women and, you know, in, in our world. Although we were able to make a lot of gains for farm workers in California, uh, we know that there are still pockets of California uh, where, especially when they bring in new immigrants that they don't know their rights, where farm workers are still being mistreated, uh, where the employers are not following the laws in terms of uh, providing them with the clean toilets or the drinking water or the rest periods that, or, or safety conditions, right? Uh, that they're entitled to. And then these basic rights that we got for farm workers here in California, farm workers throughout the country still do not have those basic rights. And I think that's, that's a tragedy.